Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hasad Malakar Wars channel. Today's video is a continuation from yesterday's video, which is part of the series, How the Air Conditioning System Works. The topic of today's video is going to be Armora Refrigerant Boiling Points. We're going to go over some of the most common Armora Refrigerants used in the past and today, and we're going to discuss their boiling points and how that ties into the air conditioning system. So let's get started. So real fast, before giving you the boiling points of the refrigerants, we're going to go over an important note. Pressure increases the boiling points of refrigerants just like a pressure cooker increases the boiling point of water from 212 degree Fahrenheit at sea level up to 250 degree Fahrenheit at around 30 psi. Now this is important because this liquid, this water, can absorb more heat under pressure. Atmospheric pressure, just so you know, is 14.7 psi at sea level. The reason why I keep bringing water to this example is because it's a liquid we all know. Plus, the majority of citizens know what a pressure cooker is and can relay how the pressure cooker, yes, increases the pressure and cooks things faster. Now, during the last video, I talked about latent heat, which I actually pronounced it wrong. I said latent heat and it's not correct. I promise I will pronounce it correctly this time, so it's latent heat. So why is that important? It's because even though latent heat is something that cannot be found with a thermometer, that is the heat that it took to convert this liquid to either solid or to vapor. And this very principle is used on the air conditioning system. As we continue with this series, you'll understand why. Now today's video, as promised, is about the boiling points of the refrigerants that are used on the air conditioning system. So let's take a peek. So right here we have four of the most common automotive refrigerants used in the past and the present. And these are the boiling points at atmospheric pressure, which is 14.7 psi. So R12 is one of the oldest. Its boiling point is minus 21.6 degrees Fahrenheit and minus 29.8 degrees Celsius. This refrigerant was one of the first ones that was used, but due to concerns of ozone depletion, it's still being used on vehicles in the mid-90s. Then it was replaced by the uh, R134A, its boiling point is minus 15.3 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 26.3 degrees Celsius. This refrigerant right here is still being used by some automakers. This is something that you can buy at your regular auto parts store. You don't need a license. For this one you did. Work compressors are relatively safe, and that's why it's sold to the public over the counter. Now, no different than the R12, there are some concerns that the R134A is still affects the ozone layer and now is being replaced by the R1234YF. Its boiling point is minus 20.2 degree Fahrenheit which is minus 29 degrees Celsius. Working pressure between these two is similar and technicians who designed the 1234YF say that even though you cannot use this refrigerant on an AC compressor that was previously fitted with the 134A you can use 134A on a system that was designed for 1234YF. Interesting stuff. Now some German engineers are concerned about 1234YF being potentially flammable when combined with the oils. So that leads to the R744, which is carbon dioxide. Its boiling point is minus 69.88 degree Fahrenheit, which is minus 56.6 Celsius. The R744 is considered to be the safest of them all, however, its working pressures are extremely high. Just the low pressure alone is in between 300 to 400 psi, and the high pressure is about 1800 psi. Extremely, extremely high. This right here is not something that can be used as a replacement for any of them, because the plumbing would not be able to handle the pressures that the R744 requires. So an entirely new system is required to be able to use this. The cost of working on this kind of system obviously is higher, so are the components. And handling this kind of gas in this kind of system is not something that a DIY can do, just so you know. So there you go. Now you know the boiling points of the most common automotive refrigerants. On the next video, we're going to talk about the components of the air conditioning system and how these boiling points become crucial in removing the heat from a vehicle and transferring to the outside. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you next time.